So I made a mistake, and I'm surprised no one caught it. Last Friday was part two of trying to diagnose a boot loop on an iPhone 12 Pro, and today we're gonna finish it. So let's get into the video. Part two ended with me falling into one of the traps that I see a lot of techs fall into, which is see hot, replace hot. And when I took a second look at what I was looking at, I realized that the component that was getting hot wasn't actually getting hot, it was just at a regular temperature. Not only that, but that component is critical to the CPU and NAND. The EEPROM there is what basically ties the two together, allowing you to access the data. So replacing that component in this circumstance isn't the solution. So off camera, I wish I would have recorded this. I took a look again at the small audio IC, pulled it off, reballed it, put it back. Lo and behold, the short is gone. So let's turn our attention to what I think might be the issue here, which is in fact the proximity sensor. So let's head on over to the microscope. Hello. We're gonna set our multimeter in continuity mode. And let's take a look at this connector here. So get that into focus, okay. So we've got a connector here and it's it normally connects like this. So we're gonna be looking at this as if it was upside down and we can compare it over towards the board view here, which means this outside is gonna be ground. So for example, if I touch this pin, we're gonna get ground. As you can see, this one corresponds to this one, but nowhere on the top row up until this point do we have ground except for these last three. So nothing here should be shorted to ground. As we go across them, we can see we actually get readings here, 0.74, and these ones aren't necessarily telling us if there's an issue per se with like we don't need to compare these to the numbers, but we can tell if something is shorted to ground just by watching continuity. And right here, we do have a short. Now we can compare that to a brand new flex, and let's see if we have a short there. And if you look, we've got no shorts anywhere, anywhere here, no shorts. Okay, these last three read really, really high, which is what they're supposed to be for the grounding but nothing here reads it. It would sound like this. Right here we get 0.499. So the issue is here. So now this job has suddenly turned into a face ID recovery repair. And I know a lot of you have been wanting to see how that's done. And so I think this is the perfect opportunity to show you. So let's do it. So we're gonna turn on our heating platform and we're gonna bring this up to temperature. And what you can see is I've got the proximity sensor, the new one, we've got our new flux here. And we're going to just on the corner here, put the proximity sensor and we're going to desolder it from this new assembly. We just have to wait, wait a minute for it to get up to temperature and then we can take it off. There are other ways to do this with the back of a soldering iron. There are other platforms you could use more than just this corner, but this corner will be sufficient for us for what we're doing. You can gauge how hot it's getting by seeing what isopropyl alcohol does on it. It'll get to a temperature where eventually the isopropyl will almost not even evaporate or jump around like that. It'll just roll around like a ball more along the lines of what it's doing here. Oh, that's fun. So we'll hold it on to the edge of the heat plate. And in case any of you are wondering, I've got it set at 240 degrees Celsius. And it, as soon as it gets up to temperature, you'll see it start to move around and then we can pop it off just like that. So now we're going to go over to our original and do the same thing. We're going to pop it off and we're going to move it over. We'll set it down on there, let it heat up and it'll pop right off just like that. Now the amount of solder that's on there and the amount of solder that's on the new one is probably sufficient to make this work. So what we'll do is I'm gonna add a teeny bit of flux, just a little bit like that. And we'll line this guy up and you wanna make sure it's pretty much dead on before we stick it on there. I wanna make sure it's relatively close to where it needs to be. I like that, so we'll go ahead and 
heat it up and then we'll take it off the heat and now we just need to look down the side and make sure it's sitting flush and it's not so we need to put it back on the heat we're not compressing it down i'm just nudging it a little bit and let's pull it off and now we can look from the side and that is nice and flush and that looks good too so now we can go and test it all right so let's take the board now that we have the original eprom on there the ic now doesn't have an issue connect up the proximity sensor that we've transferred over the prox to and our main goal here is to just test it to see if it comes on and doesn't boot loop if it boot loops then that means that there is an issue inside the proximity sensor layers which is fixable just hopefully we don't have to do that because splitting those two is you know not the easiest not horrible it's just i don't have to do it so let's connect up the display there we go let's connect up the battery and let's prompt it to boot there we go there we got the apple logo it hasn't boot looped yet which is about now when it would do it and yes all right we are on that means that we have fixed the issue with the proximity sensor the flex i bet you with that burn that it had from day one or I bet you that burn that it had from video one fused the lines together, creating a short, which that short killed the small audio I see. All right, so there we go. We we're able to transfer over the proximity sensor over to a new flux cable and get the phone to boot up without boot looping with the proximity sensor connected. At this point, I just need to put it back together, but hopefully this has given you an idea of how to diagnose and how much work will go into fixing an issue like this. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments below. If there's anything that you'd like to see in a future video, let me know. Thanks a ton for watching, and we'll see you in the next video.